Greetings, dear viewers. We're happy to welcome you again on Creative Society Global Talk Education Project. This is the new live broadcast series on Alatra TV. And today we're talking about education of the future Finnish experience. In today's live episode of Creative Society Global Talk Education, we're talking about problems and challenges that the world system of education is facing right now. We're going to talk about the goals of today's education, its content, especially of education in Finland, why it is important and why it is successful. About advantages of disadvantages of distance learning, how to change the society format of thinking from consumer to a creative one through education and what is the creative society. It's my great pleasure to introduce our today's guest is Dr. Pasi Reinikainen. Well, Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much, Konstantin. Uh, Dr. Pasi Reinikainen is CEO and owner of Finnish Education Institute. Finnish Education Institute is a consultant company which provides education policy advices in national level and practical guidelines at the school level. The company provides world-known expertise in education evaluation and policy making, system development, school design and leadership, and in teaching and school uh, principal training. Welcome again. And my name is Dr. Konstantin. I am um, an Alatra IPM participant. For those who are watching us today for the first time, I would like to say a few words about the project itself and how we, uh, a lot of IPM participants in the vision of what the Creative Society is. So just a few words about that. So a Creative Society is a society where the life of every person is the main value. This is the society where all conditions have been created for people to manifest their best human qualities, where everyone cares about the society and the society cares about each human. So let's begin, dear friends. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start with a few introductory uh, questions to Dr. Reinikainen. Dr. Reinikainen, how do you personally envision a creative society, where a society where you, your loved ones, and everyone in the world will feel comfortable and feel happy? Uh, this kind of society has to be safe. I think safe. Safety question is the main issue in human life. Uh, it has to be full of people to whom you can trust, who play with the same similar rules as you, and there has to be respect to each other. And uh, I'd like to live in a in a society as well in the future society which is civilized in a way that uh, people would have uh, intelligent discussions between each other where the democracy would function well and uh, where people would have voice and it would allow individuals as well to grow and develop their knowledge, skills, and competencies. So this is basically human-centered society, the society that is based on trust, uh, respect, friendship, support. Well, uh, one more thing is that, uh, of course, human-centered society, yes, but uh, we would like to, I'd like to live in a society as well, which is closer to the nature, environment so that the respect of the environment could be seen. Uh, people would, well, I think that we should vision ourselves and our kids like 30, 50 years from here in the, in the future, that what kind of life they would like to live in, what kind of planet they would, could be living in. And uh, I, I think that we have very short sighted decisions which we have made uh, in my generation and the, and the previous ones as well. So uh, there should be more harmony between people, this human society, and as well environment. That's brilliant. 
brilliant answer, Dr. Benikanin. Um, let me ask you um, the next question. When we're speaking about the creative society, how do you envision the development of education and science in it? How would these two areas work? Well, uh, I think that education in creative society shouldn't focus only on sciences and, and on on scientific part. I think that it's uh, uh, there's a joke about uh, Albert Einstein. He was lecturing in the States and, and one of the mother asked that, you know, Dr. Einstein, how should I raise my children to be as wise and clever as you? You know, and, and she said, he said to her that, you know, just let them imagine, tell them some fairy tales and stories. Well, how about if they like grow up a little bit like they, they are five to ten years of age? I spent it with just more stories. How about then 12, 13? Just fairy tales and stories, you know, imaginations and creativity. I, I think uh, we should allow uh, people making mistakes in our education and also in science. Uh, I have a background as well in applied nuclear physics and and uh, as a science teacher. But, uh, and I, I think it's very important to find out that also in natural sciences, there are some uncertainties. Mm -hmm. And learning by doing and learning by making mistakes, it's, it's a natural way to learn. That's great. And uh, so in, in schools and in educational system, it's very important that uh, people should be able to make stupid questions or kids should be especially because they are not no such things like stupid questions. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's more or less what I think. Good. Uh, Dr. Rainey you, uh, you were telling about the stories, about the importance to tell stories to kids. You know, uh, it reminded me that in my childhood, when I, my grandmother, my parents were reading me stories, uh, the stories are always teaching us humanity and moral values. From your point of view, how important in modern society and especially in schools to raise questions about humanity and morality. And how is it working in Finnish schools? Well, I, I think that you are now talking about the key aspects and key things about the, any educational system, since uh, the purpose of educational system in, in countries is to raise the future citizens, which have high moral values and and uh, so it's it's not about uh, transferring knowledge from teachers to the kids. It's uh, it deals with values, and hopefully, the values shared in the society and surrounding uh, neighborhood and 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 the culture cultural values as well. And so that goes as well. Close collaboration between uh, educational system, schools, and parents, and and so on. So, in in many countries, parents are like, uh, well, they are strangers in the schools. They might visit the schools once or twice a year, but that's about it. And I think that it's very important to see uh, see the school as a, as a continuity in children's life to the future uh, citizenship education. Uh, whether or not the moral values and ethics comes uh, in religion only or religious subjects or so, I, I think that's uh, kind of like nonsense. I think every teacher should be responsible of showing some uh, ethics on their work showing that in, in their teaching and uh, it's very important that kids could learn as well uh, 
like in for example how the real life works uh, so that's why it should be an example right so uh, the teacher first of all should be an example of this uh, human values of morality of ethics he should, he should first of all I, I, I think I think so but meanwhile you should consider also teachers are human beings and uh, teachers should be able and allowed to make some mistakes yeah, true. and they can say and tell that okay sorry i made a mistake and let's do like this and that now and this is the correct way i got it dr rainy Kanye, from your point of view um if for example upbringing is more important than for example the education itself like for example mathematics reading writing but first of all to raise a human being um then from your point of view um what are the most challenging challenges of today's system of education let's say in the world well uh i've been working in in various different countries all around the world uh, in in some some parts i i faced uh, corruption among the teachers and 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 schools which is a big issue uh, this uh, teachers acknowledge skills and competencies lack of those teachers basic training mm -hmm. uh, those might be like very uh, big issues and problems in some countries as well and then uh, if educational systems are facing some reforms and directors think that okay now it's time to do the reforms there's always resistance against the reforms exactly. and maybe we and maybe the political decision makers should also uh, allow uh, participants to be heard more about uh, the reforms for example, if, if you are making teacher standards or school principal standards, like in Ukraine, uh, I think it it's, would be very wise to uh, involve principals in that discussions mm -hmm. of their own standards from the very beginning. That's exactly, because, you know, uh, one of the problems that those people who are making the reforms are not you know, full understand of how the school is working, how the university is working, how the people, the children, the parents, the, you know, teachers, of course, are living within the system and what exactly should be done in order to make it better. Um, Dr. Rainey Kanin, then um, if we talk about the school education in Finland, right now it is considered indeed one of the most successful and one of the best ones from your point of view what makes finnish education so successful okay uh in finland we have had well it's it's a it's not a you know in, in education you can't have quick wins uh so our educational system has been built in not in 100 years but 150 years or so the reading and education the reading skills literacy skills were highly valued and in 1850s you could not get married without knowing how to read and write mm -hmm. so and and this uh, teacher's profession wasn't that uh, highly appreciated among the the uh, public or in the 60s and 70s uh, 70s we made this comprehensive school system which doesn't allow parallel school systems and or, or parallel lines for very young kids and it, it's the comprehensive school it, it was very good and 
our teacher education it's uh, master level teachers also in kindergarten uh, it means five years of schooling we have research based education mm-hmm. but most most uh, the biggest issue for anything uh, is that uh, well we have actively built the role of teachers and and the appreciation of teachers our teacher union has been working on that so that's why it's a highly appreciated profession exactly. uh, if you ask from the high school graduates that what they would like to become uh, more than 40 percent of them say the teachers mm. and teachers to becoming a teacher it's almost as popular as becoming a medical doctor doctor yes or lawyer or so so it is first of all prestigious and respected yes and that's and but most of all any society you know and anything uh, in order to develop you need to have you need to allow some sort of uh, Uh, criticism mm-hmm. in order to develop you uh, and you had to be reflective so crit- being critically reflective it's the main issue in development development of any system and we have been able to do that and uh, well among the political decision makers we have also had the consensus about the importance of education mm-hmm. and Finland uh, we don't have that many natural resources we have okay we have some uh, metal uh, industry and we had some forestry but uh, cold winters and so on made us to search something else so it's, it's this education and we we really think highly about our engineers and we used to have Nokia as you know yes the yes. cell phone company but uh, not anymore but now it's it's the high tech uh, high tech uh, society i would say Finland. dr rainikanen uh, will it be right if i say that within pretty much a long period of time the finnish uh, system of education has worked out some kind of the culture of self-improvement, especially among teachers. There is, of course, you know, teachers are allowed to make some mistakes, to be criticized, but still this criticism is accepted right, understood right, and as I understood from what you've said, that you are not hurrying with any, you know, quick decisions, you are not jumping with conclusions, you are making things move slowly wisely discussing and introducing it you know new things wisely well um, i think that what we do is that we are trying to involve all the stakeholders in the development processes and in mm-hmm. reforms and it's it's very important to hear the voices of uh teachers of parents of uh kids students pupils and uh and society at large and you know the school it's it's as i said earlier the major purpose of educational system is to produce the uh future citizens and all the values and ethics should be coming from the education and home and they should be aligned together so let me ask you the question about important. home if we're okay. talking about home parent educa- uh, parents you know grandparents and all other you know stakeholders who are involved in bringing up new citizens uh, from your point of view what should be re- the relationships Uh, between generations, children, parents, grandparents, in order to help to have a healthy atmosphere in the first cell of our society, in the family. Yeah, well, it's it's um, 
very difficult question, especially at, at this time, since uh, I think in many of the countries, like in Finland, uh, the families are not so tight anymore as they used to be in old times, where the generations mm-hmm. lived under, under, under the same roof. Yes. And now they are big cities and so on, but uh, it really would be healthy for the young people and all the people actually to see the how people are getting aged, uh, getting older and, and even die, you know, the whole uh, curvature oh, of the life. life now, yeah. now, the, now it is so that in many times the old people have been isolated to the, could I say, to the nurseries. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's not so much connection uh, between generations. So I, I think that that's what we really should be doing is take care of uh, con- continuity in in, a, in a, between the generations and and so they aren't generation gaps be- in between that much. And it's uh, I, I think that. Uh, like giving a birth, uh, dying is also a very natural thing. So, in in my mind, uh, for example, my, when my my mother died in December, it was very, of course, very sad moment for all of us, of my daughters, for me and my wife, and so on. But meanwhile, it was very natural thing. She was getting old, and and. And so on. So I, I think that uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, people should be aware of the and and close by uh, with different ages of uh, their fellows and relatives, and maybe if there are no relatives in living, uh, some other people in the community. Mixing these old is. and younger peoples is important. In old times, it was uh, in past, the old people, grandparents were the ones who teach the values and ethics and the culture. Exactly, yes. That's true. The family is, you know, we can't, well, that, that, that the family, that's one of the most important things that every person should have. Yes, yes, and 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 if you think about education as well and so on, I've, I've been working with PISA study, the international study of uh, of the uh, students' achievement in math, science, and reading literacy. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I, I I've been asked how can we raise the kids to be better in PISA in our country, I said that let them. In, be involved in everyday things like uh, if you do the food you let them decide what food they would you would do and let them check out what kind of ingredients would they need to have let them check out whether or not you have those ingredients in your home if not let them go to the uh, supermarket to buy them and before that they can calculate the amount, how much money they need, what sort of ingredients, and so on. So, I mean that uh, we need to have kids also involved in our everyday life, not only playing with uh, cell phones or computers and so on, And but uh, this everyday life things teach them the problem solving skills mm. and, and give them uh, I, I would say that little by little you can build trust on what they are doing and, and so on and it's very good to have them actively involved and you know when the kids are involved in such type of things uh, the role of great parents cannot be overestimated here because parents are usually at work you know earning for bread but <laughs> The grandparents are playing vital role here in upbringing, mm. moral things, and you know, human yeah. humanness. Yeah, actually, in development of, of the humankind, I, I read a book about uh, where they raised the importance of grandmothers. 
mm-hmm. it was because uh, in Stone Age and so on, old ages, men were hunters and fishers, and they died young. They went to hunting trips together from the village and or the, from the tribe, tribe and, and so on. And the ladies were collectors. So who kept the kids alive with them? It was grandmothers because grandfathers were killed already in, in hunting or so on. So grandmothers took care of the kids and they were very important in this educating the kids. This is very, you know, um, interesting and important what you just mentioned because we are talking here in general about the role of a mother, of a woman in the society. Because every woman is a mother, either already a mother or a potential mother that is going to influence the future of the kids one way or another. Dr. Renikani, let me uh, ask you the next question, uh, which is very important right now, especially for many countries. Uh, during this lockout uh, caused by pandemic situation in the world, a lot of schools move to distance learning. Um, and today we're talking more and more about that. From your point of view, what are the advantages and disadvantages of distance learning today? And can it completely substitute the teacher and communication with the teacher or school? What do you think? Well, uh, what is the role? First of all, distant learning. Uh, in, in Finland, how we did it was that uh, actually my wife and daughter, they are teachers and they work with the kids every day. They taught them through the uh, internet. They work with, uh, different applic- with the different applications. And so it didn't, I think that the role of teachers actually was, uh, well, it, it uh, changed throughout this uh, blockage of schools. But uh, schooling or education or teaching wasn't shut down in Finland. No, after my wife actually, at the very beginning, she had to do like uh, 12 hours days to be prepared with these new, new applications. And I think she did very well and, and actually this is my wife, <laughs> who, <Hello>. who, <laughs> who worked as a teacher. Maybe you can say that. How how was it? Mika. Uh, the teaching, distant teaching and learning. Very nice. Okay. Challenge, very challenged, but very nice. Okay. So it was nice, but challenging. So when we talked about the digital jump previously, uh, about we started to talk about that digital jump in schools four or five years ago already, even more. Now we were forced to take this digital jump. We were mm-hmm. forced to start using, and teachers were forced to start using the applications and the students as well. But in Finland, we were in a lucky position in the way that the infrastructure uh, was already there. We had Wi-Fi, 4G's connections. We had uh, laptops, computers. Uh, All the, the kids had those. So it wasn't such a big catastrophe. Mm-hmm. Some of the teachers did very well. Uh, some of the teachers just gave some homework to the kids, but didn't really give lectures. But I think that this kind of... Uh, uh, activity served some of the kids who didn't have diffi- learning difficulties but for example special needs kids were very v- v- vulnerable group of, of the children and and i think that those should need additional care and and person to learn with and and who could support them more but uh for learning and learning outcomes, I think that for some kids, this even worked better. Mm-hmm. We were worried here about how 
teachers, uh, oh, how, how this uh, kids would cope since uh, teachers don't know if they have difficulties in, in home or other than school related as well. But what I learned from my wife, for example, was that uh, she said that actually she had more time now to discuss with individual kids than normally in school during the school days because now they could uh, book a dot time when she addressed each one of the kids separately and in, in school time it's everybody like 30 kids together and, and so on a lot of act actions and so on so i think it's it's important to keep this decent learning as a part of the teaching repertoire in the, in the future as well. And since uh, some of the kids can benefit out of it greatly and well, uh, but of course this social uh, socializing and a social thing what we have been discussing as well, how to bring up the human beings needs contact with other people as well. So the distant learning technologies will never be able to substitute the teacher and his role in the education of uh, pupil. I would say that substitute, it's, it's uh, like a bad word and not what I really mean. I think teaching might take different kind of forms mm -hmm. and learning as well. And this... I would not never ever substitute teachers as like snapping the fingers or uh, as whole. But uh, of course, some things can be taught and learned also in different ways. Dr. Renikani, let me ask you the next question, please. Uh, about the creative society, about the new format of the society. Uh, we're living in the world where there are so many different types of conflicts, military conflicts, social, racial, religious, economic conflicts. In the society of your dream, um, can there be such a thing as a conflict based on whatever? And from your point of view, what is the reason of all conflicts in the world? Such a thing as conflict uh, at all. It well, I, I think that as, as long as we are human beings, uh, there might be conflicts, different interests of human beings and how they will escalate, how they will get bigger. It is a big issue. But, uh, and how we can uh, actually deal with the conflicts. Can we discuss about those? Can we search for consensus? Or should we just... Uh, uh, how, how, like, uh, how good are we in negotiations? It, it's, uh, I, I think that there will be always some conflicts of interests. Unfortunately, since... We are all human beings and individuals. Uh, we have different values. Although we would be uh, living in the same family, for example, if you would be my brother, I, I would, of course, we have similar kind of goals and so on. But uh, meanwhile, we have also interests of our own. Sometimes we are conflicting or our interests are conflicting with others. And may I ask you then, if we have some interests, we are different, of course, we have different you know, opinions, state of mind, but uh, upon the whole, from your point of view, what unites all people all over the world? Nevertheless, we are different. What unites all of us from your point of view? Well, I, I think that uh, it's uh, respect of life, also respect of some 
dif differences and it might be as well that we are very interested and and of the things and which are new of course we we might be also a bit scared of the new things all of us but uh, everything new interests us it's in our built built in nature i think mm. so uh when I've, I've been traveling all around the world and living tens of years in various various countries uh, i've noticed that you know they are like very nice people all over the world and and when you get get to see the when when you earn their trust uh your life changes very di differently and and rapidly and and so i think the main issue over here is as well that uh it's a respect of the other people respect of the individuality as well the differences between our, us and the tolerance as well we don't need to be exactly the same and when we realize this it's it's a very much like rich richness of our life and and living but hey there are some di different kind of nuances that they can bring in something new for well i have an example when i was young i made a honeymoon tour uh, all around the world with my wife as backpackers and first mm -hmm. i thought that i had to be the guide i had to be the a travel agent and I had to be the one who booked everything and, and bodyguard and, and and so on and my wife didn't do anything except complained at the beginning but then then we started to realize that it was very nice to have two pairs of eyes to see and, and talk to people and, and get other kind of contacts and, and see did some things which I, I could never have done in my life. Mm -hmm. and, and I did my things, and so I think the differences as well. They uh, like uh, enriching us, enrich each other. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. <clears throat> Doctor Rainy Cannon, uh, we have uh, not so much time left, uh, but I would really love to ask you two more questions. Um, from your point of view, how important is it to find out from people? how they envision future society, the creative society, as we say, whether they want to live in such a society. And from your point of view, how important is it to ask people about that? Well, I think it's it's not only asking, it's, it's um, to have discussions about that. It's, it's very important since uh, we have to make decisions which will in impact mm -hmm. uh, our kids' lives and, and the future generation's life. And, and so it's, it's good to ha set up the goal far away and, and getting some sort of consensus about those. Share ideas, how these things could be done and should be done what can be expected, uh, it's very important, actually. Thank you. And may I ask you one more last question? Uh, what would you like to wish to all our viewers and, of course, to all participants of the International Public Movement Alatra? I'd like to wish you, firstly, in these times, health and I would like to wish you uh, wish you that you could keep on dreaming and and that you would keep on being uh, reading some stories and fairy tales to your kids to make things together with them as a family involved not only the young people, but the old people in your activities and learn from each other. 
and sometimes even invite some foreigners to visit you and hear directly some strange customs and cultures uh, and habits from the from the others. Thank you very much, Dr. Have a nice life. Thank you very much. Uh, dear friends, if you'd like to learn more about the Project Creative Society or to be a guest on one of our programs, uh, please visit the website, which is called alatraunites.com. Right now, you can see it on your screens. Uh, there is a button called Join Us. You can click on it and fill out a friendly form answering just a few questions on one of the languages you feel comfortable. And send us a message. As soon as we get it, we will definitely contact you. Thank you for watching us today. Thank you for joining us today. Dr. Rainy Kainin, great thanks for joining us today and for answering our questions. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.